Hello, Wanderers. I will begin by being very upfront and saying that there is no official new start date from the Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones mod team as of yet. However, the title of this video is not clickbait. I've spent several hours over the last week setting up a custom scenario that you can play by downloading the save file in the description below. If you've played through Robert's Rebellion and you've seen everything that it has to offer, this scenario might have something new for you. This scenario is an alternate history, one in which Robert Baratheon was slain by Rhaegar Targaryen in their battle upon the Trident. With Robert dead, victory for the Targaryens was swift, as was the justice that they would reign upon their enemies. The Mad King, Aerys Targaryen, in a fit of rage, had the families Stark, Arryn, and Baratheon annihilated almost to the last man, leaving none alive except for a few stragglers from those dynasties, and the vengeance he meted out on their supporters was only marginally less severe. These acts of tyranny would lead Rhaegar Targaryen to usurp his father's position and take his place on the Iron Throne, leading the Seven Kingdoms to peace for a time. But peace was not to last for long. While traveling to the north to name his son John as the new Lord of Winterfell, and to visit the Wall, that great bastion that would guard against the wildlings and whatever laid beyond, King Rhaegar would take ill, eventually succumbing to his illness before returning to King's Landing. Now his son Aegon VI takes the throne, ruling alongside his sister and wife Rhaenys. But will he be able to retain his seat on the Iron Throne? That question remains to be seen. So now that you've had a bit of the history of this scenario, let's take a look at some of the more interesting characters and stories that you may consider for yourself when loading up this save file. Aegon Targaryen sits on the Iron Throne, but almost immediately upon his ascension, he faces civil war. His uncle Viserys, Lord of the Stormlands, has allied with the Ironborn and raised a huge mercenary army with which he plans to take the Seven Kingdoms for his own. Their forces are evenly matched, and it may be outside forces which will determine the fate of this war. In the north, Jon, son of Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark, was given the title of Lord Paramount and gifted the Stark family Valyrian steel sword Ice, which had been held in King's Landing after Ned Stark was executed by the Mad King. Despite his lineage, the lords and ladies of the north do not accept their new liege, as Jon has been raised in Dragonstone with his Targaryen family and knows little of the northern ways. He faces his own rebellion, as Great John Umber leads a powerful army of Northmen against the young Lord Paramount in what will surely prove a test of his mettle and determination. When John Arryn was beheaded, Aerys Targaryen gifted both the Eyrie and rulership of the Vale to his vassal, Mark Grafton, one of the few Vale lords who remained loyal during the war. His son Randall is an old man now, and there are still those in the Vale who hold a grudge against the Graftons, and a shred of hope remains for the Arryn dynasty in the form of Denis the Darling, who may be able to retake the Vale if he can muster up the support of his fellows. Granted rulership of the Riverlands after Robert's rebellion, House Derry has managed to keep a strong grip on power. The current Lord Paramount, Damon Derry, is a skilled warrior with enough grasp of politics to keep the River Lords mostly in line. Perhaps the greatest threat he faces is in River Run, which is held by Edmure Tully, who somehow managed to escape the Great Purges following the death of Robert Baratheon. Prince Doran has ruled Dorne for many years and can be expected to rule it for many more. House Martell enjoys a position of power and prestige in the Seven Kingdoms, as it is his nephew Aegon who sits on the Iron Throne. Ambitious lords and ladies within Dorne may see the Civil War as an opportunity including the Dark Star of House Dane, who looks to inherit Starfall upon the death of his uncle. Despite the civil war raging between the Targaryens, the Reach still remains mostly at peace under the rulership of Mace Tyrell. However, his rival, Lord Leighton of Oldtown, may be seeking an opportunity to rise in power 
in the wake of the conflict enveloping the lands around them. Ever in search of more power and influence, Tywin Lannister may see a great opportunity in the Targaryens fighting among themselves. His hated son Tyrion stands to inherit Casterly Rock, and Tywin may have to beware next time he finds himself on the privy. Elsewhere, a young lord of House Vickery, a bastard branch of the ill-fated House Reign, has an opportunity to reclaim the legacy of his ancestors and perhaps even get revenge upon the Lannisters, should fortune favor him. Balin Greyjoy may rule the Iron Islands with an iron fist, but he is not without challenges. While the Greyjoys' alliance with Viserys Targaryen may mean a ruler of their blood could one day sit on the Iron Throne, the other Ironborn simply see the war as an opportunity to return to the old ways, raiding the coasts and taking land, loot, and women for themselves. In the far north, the wars have distracted the Seven Kingdoms, leaving the Night's Watch on their own to defend the south from the wildling threat. Sensing this, a deserter from the Night's Watch by the name of Mance Raider has named himself King Beyond the Wall and looks to use the chaos in the south as a chance to lead his people to victory against their enemies. Those are just a few of the interesting characters you might consider in your own playthrough, and there are plenty of easter eggs and hidden lore that you can find yourself by exploring this scenario. If this seems interesting to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button, it really helps the channel and you'll be the first to see when we come out with new roleplay series, including in this scenario. Until next time, Wanderers, thank you for watching.